Avery, do you watch YouTube? Yes, sir. Do you know what it means when they say hit that like button? Yes. Do you know what it means when they say subscribe? Yes. Do you like the Southeast Gasfers Association? Yes, very much. Have you subscribed to the Southeast Gasfers Association? Yes. Can you tell everybody watching what to do? You need to subscribe and hit that like button. All right, Southeast Gasser Association bringing you back in here rounds two through the finals here at Shadyside Dragway, the second race of the year for the Southeast Gasser Association. Who's your racing tire bringing you round number two here at Superstock? And there you see Ron Allison. He's going to take a bye run right there by virtue of being that number two qualifier. Here comes Johnny Royals going to take on none other than Mark Hackett. Boy, he's got plenty of Mercury poison in there for the breeze. Johnny had a pretty convincing win round one, David, up against the Bowden Jumper. But I tell you, talk about an opponent he's got now. There is an opponent. He gives him a decent 60 foot, but something happens right there. I think That's what happened there was forward power, or Mercury power, is it? As he likes to say. All right, the legacy right here of Bobby Frizzell. You know, he was a uh, winner by virtue of a red light in the first round. Mary Beth Haynes trying to get him lined up, and he gets none other than that big 64 miss gain of the four-speed stampede. Robert Pevley coming up in round number two right here. Bobby got a break in the first round, and my, 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 had he better pray for one in this one because he is up against the 2019 champion, Robert Pevley. Pevley continues to stretch that margin out. Good sound by that big block underneath the hood right there. There's the wino, Dale Morton out of Dallas, North Carolina. There you see that North Carolina flag on the door of that 57 Ford. He calls it Lucille. He's gonna be running none other than Houston Nice in that two-bit racing yellow four-door Chevy two out of Aiken, South Carolina. Let's see if he's got enough under the hood. Look at the hood coming up for Houston Nice but too much of that big Ford horsepower as he stretches it out at the end and takes the win. Sykes, the Missouri runner right there, Brian Bickens running that little Chevy to the junkyard dog owned by Danny Bird. He's gonna be taking on Chris Austin right here. This is gonna be a good matchup. Austin in that 63 uh, Impala over here in the right lane. Big car versus small car here, Mitch. That it is, both these cars closely compared and qualified should be a tremendously close drag race, David. So far, they are neck and neck. Brian Bickens pulling it out by ever so close of a margin as we move into Seagas round number two. Molly Motorsports bringing you the action right here. And there is the scalded dog of Tim Hall, that 67 Rambler out of Abbeville, South Carolina. Going to be taking on the Carolina Flash of Steve Bright. Steve Bright looking to go some rounds right here today. Both these guys are veterans of our armed forces. And there we go, rolling the beam again, David. You know, this, I don't know what's going on. It's the cars, it's not the racetrack, people. Just take a ride with Tim and see what happens inside. Great shot right here from his office. You can see him here, David. He's rolled into the pre-stage bulb. He's gonna put, and look, you see the car jump right there? It's like the clutch just grabbed. Now this will kind of show you, Tim is one of the calmest nature people. But even with that, he says, ah, I'm just mad. I got to shift the gears. <laughs> yeah, that is that is true. Tim Hall, an even killed man, but that was enough to frustrate anybody. There's our 2018 champ, Larry Noel, in that 55 Chevy, the crazy horse out of Aiken, South Carolina, going to take on Scott Wallace in that Indian Express. As we said earlier, the Indian Express been making some good horsepower gains this year. But boy, he's got his hands full right here as he jumps on the big horse right here. You know, Larry is in great racing form today, and he could be in contention for the 21 championship, and boy, did he leave on the 10. And look at that car moving to the right. Larry's making a correction, yanking another gear. That's how you win races and eventually a championship. Watch, Watch this close. Man, look at that car just moving to the left, moving to the right, keeping it from going over the center line. Touched it, it appeared. Uh, but again, you know, that's just what you got to do. You, there's no victory in letting off, David. You got to leg them down, brother. Now, here we go. The, the under new man, the bill with the, the uh, troublemaker having trouble getting started, trying to push start it. I don't believe it's going to happen. Yeah, I was, I was looking forward to that matchup right here with, with Ben uh, Shaw to uh, see the two trucks go down this track alongside of each other. But 
Ben's going to get a competition single right here as Wilson unable to make the call. All right, there is Josh Pruitt, the young blood out of Inman, South Carolina, coming at you. A couple of Fords right here, the 63 Ford Fairlane of Pruitt, the 64 Ford Falcon Wagon right here of Jimmy. He's a uh, Huff is out of Loganville, Georgia. Jimmy Huff got the budget lettering job on that thing, David. That's about all you can say on that one. I tell you, Jimmy is a do-it-all kind of guy, and he better do it all here, but he is in trouble. Coming back on him. I don't know if he's going to be able to take him over. No, he wasn't. Boy, that car made a violent move to the center as he uh, Boy, dropped the clutch. It ever. I'm here to tell And there's Dana Castro getting another competition, getting a competition. Diana Casto. Diana Casto, I tell you what, for you, the husband Dana, the quick draw Falcon, this car is going into the third round. Well, it's not exactly how I wanted it to go, but the chips fall, and when the chips fall this way, I really can't complain. As I said before, take them as you get them because sometimes they're few and far between. And as I said, go up there and act like you own the place. Put a third round in the books. I will definitely take this one very appreciatively. I was watching you and Jenny Moses last night running, and both of y'all looked like you had the best runs of your careers. I did. I did by far. I had my fastest time. I had my fastest reaction. Well, you know, I told Dana, I told Dana when I pulled up, he should have had you in this car all along. Looks like that may well be the truth. Well, I, I'm a little stubborn, and I don't drive or do anything until I'm ready, and I guess this is my, my year. Well, congratulations, Diana. It is great to see you making rounds. I just look to see you make some more. And in the third round, we'll be waiting on you to do a top-end interview. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Moving right along to B-Gas as this show continues to roll on. Summit Racing Equipment, and there he is. A guy that puts all the racing equipment under stress, and that is the rod slinger of Adam Lowhorn. He's going to be in the right lane, and buddy, he's got a tall order right here as he's going to be taking on none other than Wayne Swalford. Wayne Swalford, and there is uh, there's his dad backing him up. You know, those two make quite a duo, David. Uh, those guys travel the country racing, and it is great to see that father-son relationship, but let's see what Wayne Swalford can do with that wheel standing falcon. I think Wayne Swafford can put that Falcon on the trailer, Dave. Yeah, too many wheelies right there for Adam Lowhorn. And there is Troy Leitner once again with that Tim Hall horsepower underneath the hood there of that 51 Henry J. The shake and bacon. He's going to be running Todd um, Rosenberry right here. David, you know, the shake and bacon, that, that car is just continually improving, improving, improving. And look at this matchup. Wow. Who won that one, David? Rosenberry did not win on that one. Leitner did, but man, what a great race right there. Coming right at you. There he is, a double down of Todd Oden out of Birmingham, Alabama. Going up against Daniel Haynes out of Holly Springs, South Carolina in that Falcon of his. Mary Beth Haynes out in front of her husband, Gina Oden, out in front of her husband, Todd, as they get back into their beams. The 57 a wagon right there of Todd Oden. There you see a good shot of him. Birmingham, Alabama, where he calls home. Part of that Bama boys that I call them. That is them. That is the Bama boys. But here you got two really good husband-wife teams up here. Ford Chevrolet doing battle. Where is this one going to go? I think Todd went red, David. Great race right there. And... Looks like Todd Oden takes the win. Okay, well, I was thinking he went red on that round. I don't no, know why he did I not, that. He but. did not go red there. He took the victory right there over uh, Daniel Haynes. So he will move on now and take on another opponent coming up. Here is Ken Rainwater right here, part, another Bama boy, the neighbor of Todd Oden essentially down there, and he's taking on Mike Blackwell in the Smoking Sam out of Campobello, South Carolina. Rainwater was the winner of our first race of the year. Look at the wheels get in the air for him. He won our first race down in uh, Florida this year. And man, wow, another David, great these race. finishes are just amazing. Talk about getting your money's worth when you come through the gate at the Southeast Gassers Association. I, this is just the best drag racing area. Now on the line up here, Jerry Burton. 
He had a competition single in round number one, taking on Old Nemesis in the 56-55 event. Tim Bailey right there, our two-time world champion. This is a great matchup of guys that's got a lot of trophies between the two of them. The Todd Fox horsepower for that Corvette over there, giving a free bird all he wants, but the free bird taking the win. There's TJ York, 9,200 RPMs is where he's gonna do a burnout at in the green horn hillbilly. He is going to I think have he hit 9,201 <laughs> on that one, David. <laughs> He's got Bill Revels, and Bill Revels has really stepped his performance up as well right there out of Pisgah, North Carolina, in that Comet. The Black Betty, he calls it, here in the left lane. So, T.J. York definitely going to have to be on his P's and Q's and not miss any shifts right here in this fourth field. Bill going to try to bambalam him. I tell you, he better have a big bam if he's going to because he's got the champion from last year on the other. And Bill going red, handing it over to T.J. York and Buddy. Is he burning the woods down, coming up his tail? Hey, guess round number two brought to you by Summit Race Equipment. We've got Summit Race Equipment on everything we got out here in the Southeast Castles, and there he is, the Silver Street 2, the 58 Corvette of Kenneth Phillips. He's going to be taking on that beautiful boogeyman car of Chris Dunn out of Anderson, South Carolina. Chris Dunn been away from the Southeast Gassers for a few years now. Got got back out here, got on tour with us again. Going to be racing Kenneth Phillips, and I know this is a big matchup for him. He can make a statement if he can take out Phillips right here, but he's got to really go to do that. David, he sure can. This is kind of like coming in the bar and taking out the biggest guy first. Let's see how this one goes. Kenneth Phillips uncharacteristically turns on the red light in this matchup. So Chris Dunn with a little intimidation maybe right there. Chris Don't know. Chris advancing to round three. Good job, Chris Dunn. There is Gabriel Burrow right there in the Southern Flyer coming up in right towards you. He's going to be taking on the Iceman Cometh. And, David, you know we may have called that one wrong in round number one. I believe we may comment that Rod Bergener may have lost round number one. Rod, I apologize for that if we did so. But there's a good look at that wild man sitting up in that hot rod. Rod Bergener in the former car of Steve Davis, last year's champion. Let's say when right now, Gabriel Burrow. What have you got? Plenty of horsepower at John Cozzi Power, even though he had a little moving uh, side to side on the starting line. Too much horsepower right there. Yeah, that car is a little bit wild at the drop of the clutch, that one of Gabriel's is, but hey, that just makes for some exciting drag racing, David. Two beautiful Chevy 2s right here. That one is the Happy Days owned by Ben Christopher out of Bowling Springs, South Carolina. Mount Holly, North Carolina is where you see Dean Jonas from, and Jonas, the longtime uh, fabricator with Tommy Mooney at Tommy Mooney Race Cars. These two cars are just gorgeous to watch up and gorgeous to watch go down the racetrack. Not uncommon to see these two guys eat lunch together in Spartanburg, South Carolina, but there was no lunch today. It was all business. There is some business on the starting line again. Couple of big blocks. There is the slingshot of Todd Blackwell out of Campobella. Gonna be taking on uh, Leslie Horn. This is a good matchup. You got the car race engine under the hood for the slingshot. You got Gene Fulton Power under the hood for the chick magnet of Horn. 55 Chevy for Horn. And both of these cars, David, well financed. They have the best of the best to see who can put it down the best. So far, Leslie Horn was had the strong run. That was a good run right there. Next up, Chase Howard gonna be taking on Justin Moses in the next matchup. Chase Howard making an appearance at most of our shady side events, but uh, you know, in that previous matchup, Todd Blackwell's gonna advance because Leslie Horn went red right there, so that might be the reason we saw Todd Blackwell take it a little bit easier down track. Could have been. Now, David, right here is one JT Moses. Talk about a guy that has improved. You know, JT used two years back, you know, he was kind of a first round guy, but towards the middle of last year and so far, he is starting to show up in the latter round and buddy, he is just spanking that Chevelle. Great race right there. Chase Howard getting beat by the narrowest of margins, but JT Moses does move on as we move on into the third round of Superstock action. There you see Ron Allison 
Ron Allison getting another single. Buddy, I tell you what, he better go buy a lottery ticket, Well, David. the single right there come off a competition by as Robert Peffley was unable to make the call. Kind of uncharacteristic, but that was a competition single. So that brings up next Mark Hackett in the Mercury Poison versus Brian Bickens in the Junkyard Dog in the left lane right there. Chevrolet versus Ford right here. Let's see who's going to come out on top. But that, that mercury of Mark Hackett is just one lethal machine, David. It really is. And there is Dale Morton coming up next. Dale Morton, uh, once again, out of Dallas, North Carolina, in that 57 forward. And he calls Lucille. Morton's going to get a buy run right here by virtue of the number of cars in competition. And we move into third round of sea gas. Brought to you by the Hub Saver. Make sure you have one of them on your uh, trailer. First out, the, the uh, buy run right here of Steve Bright out of North Charleston. He's just going to take the light, save that motor, and go back and get ready for the next round of competition. But, uh, Mitch, I think you were able to catch up with Ben Shaw a little bit earlier before he made this next run, wasn't he? That's right. He's in the staging lanes over here, and, you know, he's, he's doing good. This car and truck has really come around, and I want to kind of get his ideas of what's happening. Ben Shaw taking the odd rod into unknown territory third round yeah this is a uh, new for us for sure you know we've made a round here or there but uh, never gotten to three well unfortunately there's takes five to win today talk about a load of competition but so far one round win two round wins going into the third round again newfound territory brother what do you think about this yeah we're halfway there there's five rounds we're that's halfway <laughs> so. one year uh, one race last year um the car's just a baby doll I could bracket race this thing right now. Um, it's it's running great, you know. The only fault is me, you know. <laughs> car's running real good, so. Yeah, we did a little head work and, um, yeah, raise the compression and the motor liked that a lot, so. Yeah, between that and, you know, me getting a little more seat time, you know, it's starting to work out. Well, on some of those drives home, do you ever poke Dad in the ribs and say, Dad, I made it to the third ring? Oh, well, on the way home, it, I'll, definitely, he's gonna buy me a steak. That'll be a good taste of the steak right here if he can take out Diana Casto right here in the quick draw. There you see her husband, Dana, right there checking on things before she puts it in the beans. She's got a tall order to knock out uh, Ben Rivers right here, but, you know, speaking of seat time, whoa, look at that, Ben <laughs> Rivers. What a will stand, Ben. Lord have mercy, that just kind of stole the show right there, but Diana Casto having some trouble on the line. Next pair up right here. Now, these two guys really go at it hard. They've been matched up a long time in a lot of different rounds of competition. They have been duking it out over the years, Dave. Larry That's Noel is going to be in the right-hand lane in that 55, and then the 63 Ford Fair Lane, there is the young blood of Josh Pruitt out of Inman, South Carolina. He'll be over here in the left side. His aunt, Debbie Ison, bringing him into the beams right here. We get set for a great drag race right here. That is a good drag race underway, David, and something going wrong with Josh and Larry pulling on out. Larry Noel. Crazy Horse may be back in the saddle or back in the arena, whichever way we should say that. Back in the chute? Yeah, back in the chute, that works. Yeah, we're doing all right today. I'm getting better. The car's good, I'm getting a little better. <laughs> so you're finally catching up to the horse is what you're telling Yeah, me. finally learning to drive it. <laughs> yep. Well, Larry, you know, we can't just say that, which this is a new car, but you are a past world champion. So, you know, there's been a lot of things going on. We had an injury last year that I think got into your way quite a bit. I'm glad to see you back healthy, doing good, and, yes, making rounds. It's like old times. So. Yeah, man, feeling good. Thank you. As we move into B-Gas, great to see Larry Noel feeling better, and that's going to be brought to you again by Summit right here. Big-time matchup right here. These guys have got a lot of wins between them in various categories. Now, T.J. York in the Greenhorn Hillbilly, he's only been in B-Gas, but Todd Oden making his first year into B-Gas in that 57 wagon, the double down. He's running A-Gas with the very same car. He's running C-Gas with a 58 Biscayne, uh, 58 Delray. So, uh, gonna be a great race right here. David, how this car came to be in B-Gas is a pretty interesting story. As you were saying, he runs B-Gas or he was running A-Gas with his 57. He was running C-Gas with the 58. 
Uh, he had some engine issues, a whole bus of motors blowed up, so he kind of poured everything into a box and then poured what he poured out was a motor that would fit this car for the B gas category. And buddy, I'm gonna tell you, this thing is running at the front, but not now. He went red on that run right there. Boy, TJ York, did he capitalize. This is the way I remember you from last year. Third round out of the way, a big old King Kong on the trailer, and I don't know that this car has ever looked much better. It's getting there. We're still uh, we're still chasing gremlins, but we're getting there a little bit by little bit. We're sneaking up on it, but uh, we're getting close. We're getting close. From my vantage point down here, she looked clean and fast. She's running pretty good. Next up right there, Ken Rainwater going to be in the right-hand lane. He's going to be taking on Wayne Swafford out of Fingerville, South Carolina. And Mitch, this one has big-time implications written all over it. David, it does. You know, Rainwater winning the race in Florida. That gave him a good heads up on the point. Wayne Swafford was not at the Florida event, so naturally he was behind in the point. Right now, I don't know exactly where they're standing, but I do know this. Wayne Swalford is a guy that can win anytime, anywhere, and Ken Rainwater better be ready. Look like they left good together, and wow, oh wow. Leroy pulls it out on the big end for Wayne Swalford. Wayne Swalford, man, I gotta tell you, you weren't at Florida. Ken Rainwater had his way with the entire big ass category until he pulled beside Wayne Swalford and old Leroy. Old cars run good today, Mitch. Uh, we made a few changes over the winter on some suspension stuff, trying to get some stuff figured out. Getting tougher now. They don't get no easier the deeper you get. <laughs> well, third round out of five, Wayne. So far, so good, brother. Like I said, as you just said, they will be harder as you go, but you just took out a big one. Yes, sir. Thank you. Speaking of a big-time matchup, here's another one. What this big gas class offers you. The 51 Henry J. of Troy Leitner going to be taking on the Roebuck South Carolina Racers, the Birch Brothers. Jerry Birch driving this car, the Freebird, car that has won over 13 events in our Southeast Gasser history. Always enjoy talking with Troy when he wins rounds because he's so happy. He's so proud to tell you that he is finally, this late in life, getting to live his childhood dream of running a so Henry J in the gasser categories. And man, do we have a drag race going on now, David. Man, just edging them out at the end is the Birch Brothers. Jerry Birch, I hear you, buddy. It's round three out of the way. This is much better than the last one. You got that right. No more uh, poo-poos in the first round today. Whew. Well, hey, this is more like the old Birch Brothers of old. You know, we're making rounds. We're at Shady Side. Third round out, five to go. Hey, two more. We'll talk to you in winter, sir. I hope to see you there. All right, A Gas round number three, again presented to you by Summit Race Equipment. There is the boogeyman, Chris Dunn, taking on the happy days of being Christopher. Dunn going to be over here in the left hand side out of Anderson, South Carolina. Wayne Schless engine underneath the hood right there for him. Um, Scott Duggan's par race engine under the hood for Ben Christopher. David, you know, the boogeyman has been out of competition a little while, and he is fixing to find out just exactly how much Southeast Gassers Association and A-Gas has advanced in the three or four years that he's been gone. He is beside number one qualifier, Ben Christopher, Ben having to fight that car, but man, what a set up, what horsepower. It is, and something happened to uh, Dunn right there. Looking at Gabriel Burl dirt tracking that thing on a, a burnout right there, getting those hides good and hot. Those Hoosiers big and sticky. He's got a big matchup right here with Todd Blackwell. Blackwell one that has been a little bit of a thorn in his side. But uh, I tell you, Blackwell's gonna have to really go right here if he's gonna take out the flyer. Todd Blackwell was the one who technically took Gabriel's championship away from him last year by outrunning Gabriel and then, of course, allowing Steve Davis to, to take over that championship. So, you know, these guys are close neighbors. You know, they don't live too far apart, and they're obviously good friends. But today it is a drag race, and there goes that car going hard left on Gabriel, but doesn't matter because he's power enough to pull it on through. i tell you what, he's got to yeah, have his hands I mean, full. It's been a tough road all day. Everybody's flying, and we really weren't running what we thought we should be, but just keep chipping away here. 
I guess we chipped enough. We got one more to chip here. And not only that, but it come at the heels of the man who basically took the championship away from you last year in Holt, Florida. And so here we go again, my friend. It is an opportunity to start building the rounds this year and working on that championship. Just make sure you take the beam for the bye run. We'll be there. Speaking of being there, there's JT Moses. He's getting into uncharted territory for him. And there is his wife, Jenny, backing him up, getting him ready to go as he has a single right here. And as we were just talking with Gabriel down there, he's going to have a bye run in the next round, which is going to assure him a position in the finals. JT Moses is going to make a run here for the option of lane choice. He obviously likes the right lane better. Let's see if he has enough to take lane choice over Ben Christopher, who will be his JT Moses opponent. by run or not, brother, it is a third round. You're going into the fourth round. Just talking with Gabriel Burrell about this having the most rounds of competition for Agas in Sega history. Brother, this has been a battle today, has it not? It sure has. A lot of fast cars out here. The weather's good. They're making some, you know, like I said, some really fast passes. It's some tough competition for sure. Well, what do you think you're going to have going into the fourth round? Uh, the same as I had last round. <laughs> a win. Uh, hopefully a win. David, we're going into Superstock round number four, and let me mind you, that is not the finals. Every single category in the Southeast Gassers at Shadyside required five rounds of competition due to the number of entries in each class. If that's not a mark of growth and success for the Southeast Gassers Association, nothing would be riding on board with the wino. Look at those hands. You can tell that man has been working. He's got grease under his knuckles. <laughs> this guy is a grinder, and you got to love Dale Morton. He's taken this big old 57 forward. He has kept it and not put a bunch of fiberglass in it. And, you know, he's, he's kept it solid. And he has got a tank that he is pushing down the racetrack. That he does. You know, burnout's complete. Uh, here he is, Dale, pulling into the beams. We're going to take another ride with him inside this car here in a few minutes. Uh, as him and Ron Allison run in Poppy's toy. Now he has got his hands full with Ron Allison. That is a fast, fast race car. Number two qualifier for Ron, but Dale, I think qualified somewhere around fourth or fifth. Not too shabby. He did. Pretty good drag race underway. He is hanging with Ron, but just not enough. Yeah, the little Chevy 2 takes Let's the Let's take a ride inside here, David. What here is his crew hand pulling him in. Saying right here, right now, watch him pat this car. <laughs> I get tickled every time I see that. You think a guy like that would beat on it, he pats it like it was his little newborn baby. And maybe it is, because, you know, these guys take a lot of pride in these race cars. They're getting ready to go into the staging, and we're just going to take a ride with Dale in the wino. Lucy. Southeast Gassers drag racing at its finest right there. Superstock David. Ron Allison taking that victory as we seen just a moment ago. But you can see once those two cars got underway, Ron Dale Allison, was stuck brother, right you with him. have made it into the final round finally in Soup Sega Superstock. Thank you so much. That was my goal. I said I'd give it a year. If I didn't get in the finals, I'd put another driver in here. Well, uh, you know, in my opinion, brother, you can just keep driving it for several more years because you have made it to the finals. Good job there, my friend. We will see you after the final round. Thank you so much. Well, Ron Allison, you know, you got to love him. He's, uh, he's an older gentleman. He's been involved in every kind of racing you can imagine. And what's more important, he's been successful in all of that type of racing. Mark Hackett, number one qualifier on the starting line, with a bye run or a competition single. Which is it, David? It's going to be a bye run right here, and he is definitely going to go for lane choice. Look at and listen to this call. Mark Hackett, congratulations, brother. This, again, is one of the most heavily contested Superstock events with five rounds of competition to win this cotton-picking thing. Brother, you are on your way to the finals of not just this race, but two races in a row. Yeah, Mitch, I tell you, uh, we came up a little short in uh, in Florida, had a good car there. We come here unloaded. It was good off the trailer. I I'm going to tell you, there's some really good competition here between the car I'm about to run in the finals 
in the car I ran uh, before this pass, there's probably, no joke, 80 years of drag racing experience between those two cars. And I'm just a dumb old country boy with a really hot wife out here, and I'm proud to be racing against those folks, okay? So it's, uh, it means a lot to me. Sea gas round number four going to be presented to you by the hub saver of JFP Solutions. <laughs> and there is the steed of Larry Noel, the crazy horse. Now, I'm still laughing over Mark Hackett's comment there. Yes, Mark, you do have a hot wife and a fast race car. What else could a man want out of life? <laughs> and here goes Larry Noel. Yeah, is this a buy or a competition this, single day? This is a buy run for him as he will move on into the final round. There's Ben Shaw in the odd rod out of Lebanon, Tennessee. Going to be taking on Steve Bright out of North Charleston, South Carolina here in the Carolina Flash, that beautiful Barracuda coming up in the left-hand side right there. There you see his daughter Taylor bringing her dad up to the beams, getting him ready to go. No doubt, David, that Cuda of Steve Davis is one of the most beautiful, pristine, perfect race cars and an excellent representation of the appearance of these cars in the 60s. Good lead by both drivers right here. Ben Shaw edging out to a good lead, and Shaw streaks away in the odd rod. I don't know if you and your dad is going to be able to make it all the way home after you taking this odd rod to the finals. Congratulations, Ben. Hey, thank you. Yeah, um, we almost didn't bring enough fuel today, so, so uh, we might have to go borrow some, but it's nice to, you know, to get the old Ford in there. Well, just go by some of the pit area of the guys that you've outrun on your way to the finals. They should have some excess fuel. Yeah, and this is a well, and this is a homemade motor too. So just remember that it's a homemade motor. Well, you know that's all great news. It shows the family affair that you got going here. Your dad has got to be ecstatic. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe he's saving that for the ride home because I know that he's got to be proud of you, Ben. We will be right here for the finals, brother. Stop and see us. Perfect. Thank you. Great job right there by the Shaw family. B Gas coming up next. Summit Race Equipment going to be bringing you round number four. What a great matchup right here. The Free Bird, Jerry Birch, and his brother Joey. The formidable task that they always put up for everybody. ACP Headers, one of their new sponsors on the side there, going to be taking on Wayne Swafford. And, buddy, they got a hill to climb right here in Wayne Swafford. And you know that Joey, I mean, Jerry Birch has got to be thinking, I got to see what I can get on that tree. Got to get as much as I can get on that. There he does, David. Jerry knows that he is at a disadvantage in performance, so he's got to take this opportunity to try to make it up on the tree. With that being said, Jerry and Joey, the two brothers, you know they've yet to win a championship. They've been number two in the points in the past. They're always there. They're always a threat. A great couple of guys. You know, two brothers racing in their dad's memory. You know, it's, but now, son, they have got a mountain to climb set beside them in Wayne Swalford. And there's that red light. Jerry Birch, I talked about it. He had to go thin on Swalford, and that was the only chance he had. And Swalford Wayne Swalford, takes the Jerry win. Birch, stopping, stopping by there to give you the thumbs up. You know, there's some tremendous camaraderie and, and friends drag racing out here. But, buddy, you know, he knew that he had to challenge you on performance, and he went slightly red, 400s, I believe, David C. Yeah, me and Jerry have been friends for many years, even before me or him, either one, started the drag racing. Uh, I was a fan of his. I always pulled for him and still do. As long as he's not beside you. As long as he ain't over here or over here. <laughs> well, there would be your final round matchup, T.J. York on a bye run, and might I say, it looked like a clean one. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, T.J.'s tough. He uh, he's like they don't call him world champion for nothing. That's exactly right. He earned it, and I mean, he done a good job last year. We got a good little hot rod, though. That you do, Wayne. Make sure it's in tip-top shape for this final round because, as we just said, T.J. York will be ready. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. As we were just talking with Wayne Swalford down there, T.J. York had a bye run or maybe a competition single on that one, David. Nonetheless, he was by himself with no competitor in the other lane, and that is bad news for the big gas contingent, I gotta tell you, because this dude right here, that big number one, proudly displayed on the windows of that green horn hillbilly 55 Chevrolet. Yeah, it was a buy run right here that coming up for uh, the green horn hillbilly. And uh, like you said before, he's gonna run it through trying to get some ET right here. We'll sit back, let our fans listen to this. One.
Great and clutch I think he was right turning about 10,000 going to the line. Wayne Swafford was just sitting here watching you come through in a mighty impressive fashion on that bye run. This is going to be quite the final round matchup. Oh, yeah, we got old Wayne. You know, Wayne's the class of the field day, but we're going to give him all we can give him for this round. You know, uh, we're going to see what we can do with him. Well, he fully realizes he is racing the 2020 world champion, and you don't take that lightly. I still say this will be a monumental drag race. We're going to try to bust him. I wouldn't expect anything less. Thank you, sir. All right, here we're moving into A-Gas round number four, again presented by Summit Race Equipment. And got to be talking about this JT Moses-Ben Christopher matchup. This will decide who's going to face Gabriel Burrell in the finals. David, I can't say it enough. This would normally be the finals, but this is only the semifinals right here, buddy. You know, <laughs> this thing is just going and going and going. All of these cars, and just to imagine that there's this many caliber A gas, B gas, C gas, and super stock cars been built across the country. The crowds of people standing up there still hanging out. Yes, it's getting late in the day watching this race. That alone tells you as these cameras pan these stands just exactly how good these drag races are because people don't leave. They hang around to the last pass of the last class and see how it all unfolds and then they go home and talk about it for weeks on end afterwards, David. Here they are, JT Moses on the starting line, lined up against Ben Christopher. Buddy, JT better pour the heat. Oh, Christopher getting way up in the air. Looking Look like he had to pedal that car, David. Yeah, had some problems right there. And JT Moses taking the win. JT Moses, the finals, my brother. Congratulations. Great job. You know, Ben Christopher looked like he was trying to repaint this thing for you out there. But nonetheless, he did not beat you to the strap. That's the first thing we said when we was up there in the staging lanes. I said, just don't hit my car. <laughs> You didn't. Yeah, sure did. Said I can't afford another paint job. <laughs> well, you know, talk about a, you know, foreseeing the future, buddy. It's a good thing you said that to him because he was really getting close. Yeah, I'd, I'd seen him get loose in that lane, you know, today a couple of times, and I just kind of figured out what's going to happen. Well, you know, we just seen David or Gabriel Burrell come through there on his by run into the finals. This is going to be quite the matchup. I think you, you and Gabriel have met a few times in the past. Could it be possible that you owe him one? Uh, I do owe him one. Um, like I said, he's, we're good friends. Love Gabriel. So it'll be fun. We'll put it to our best we can. Friendship doesn't have anything to do with the drag race. I know, but yeah, either way. <laughs> That's right. No friendship <laughs> when you get to the water box. And there is Gabriel Burrell in the Southern Flyer, just a beautiful race car. Billy Ison alongside trying to get his attention, letting him know something's going on right here. Got to think that he's going to be going for lane choice right here. He doesn't know anything but wide open is Gabriel Burrell. I, I would have to say that was probably Billy telling De Gabriel that Ben lost that run because you got to understand when David ba Gabriel was already strapped in his car back in the staging lanes, he can't see exactly what's happening. So I'm sure that him and Billy was just having a conversation about do we, don't we? So I'm going to bet along with you that he's going to run this thing for lane choice because he needs that critical lane choice. He's been in the right lane all day long, and he, you know, but, you know, in a roundabout way, the left lane could help him because this car is really hunting that guardrail when it leaves over here. So let's just see what goes down on this run. David, the violence Brother, of those A-Gas cars is just the 2021 season in A-Gas, what a monumental day it has been. So many cars, like 18 or 19 cars in competition, and the number one qualifier just fell. I saw him get put on the trailer. I was trying to decide whether to run it or just take it easy and know where I was going. And when it got put on the trailer, we decided to see if we could run it out the back and get lane choice for this final. So, Do you feel that lane choice is critical at this event? I don't know. I hadn't been in the left but once today. <laughs> I suggest you stay in the right. Appreciate it. Given the opportunity to do so. I assume I did. He was talking about he's assuming he did by what was apparently a pretty strong run. Here we go. The AFX class winner. The, David, the way this category is set up, it's not part of the competition, not part of eliminations with the Southeast Gassers Association. 
but it is representing a very, very, very crucial part of drag racing history in the AFX category. And none other than the Rocky Platt here in the Dixie Twister driving this car in the name and in the honor of his father, Houston Platt. And I got to tell you, that right there was one of the baddest cars to ever cross the drag, drag, go down a drag strip across America back in the 60s and his son Rocky doing a fine job of exactly how his dad used to drive this car, which was kind of wild crazy, and let it all hang out. Todd Weberly in the Southern Comfort Falcon in the other side. Let's see who can be the class winner. Good drag race, David. Yeah, Todd Wimberly giving him all he wants right here, but man, look at the horsepower on the big end right there. Why, Mitch, Todd's had my number all day long. He had my number the last race, too. But I drove this thing just as hard as I could possibly drive it. I don't want to think my daddy's watching over me on this one. It's not going to drive it any harder. <laughs> well, so maybe, just maybe, it was Houston in the passenger seat? Well, I guarantee it was him in the passenger seat because <laughs> it went all over the track and I still stayed in it, baby. <laughs> well, like I said, you know, that's back to the days of old because your dad sure drove the wheels off of these things. And you know what, Rocky, that coupled with a wonderful day of racing, massive crowd, five rounds of competition in every class, the Sega is alive and well. Mitch, you don't know how thankful all of us are to be able to do this uh -huh. and do this for fun. We love it, man. We appreciate everybody. I know you do. Couldn't be more well said. Thank you, Rocky. All right, moving in our Superstock Finals right here, presented by Hoosier Race Tire. That racing tire that they've built for this class specifically has really been the neutralizer with these big blocks versus the small blocks, Mitch. David, that was the whole purpose of the tire. And, you know, that's, that is the thing that has really, I think, made the competition in this class so good and it is also what is attracting do you realize david you may people watching may not super stock is technically only two years old and at this point we're already got enough cars built to require five rounds of competition now tell me that that wasn't some good decision making on the behalf of robert peffley uh, mike, his, wyatt. mike wyatt and quain stott of the southeast gassers association to include this category, this very, very important part of drag racing history in the Southeast Gassers Association. And this right here is the pinnacle of proof of these two cars, of, of this category, and two fine examples of super stock race cars. All right, Ron Allison finally gets in. Man, he stumbles on the starting line, but not Mark Hackett, as Mark Hackett just put a whole shot on him and took the victory here at Shadyside Dragway. Man, what a victory that was for him as we move into Seagas, presented by Scott's Performance Wires. And there is Larry Noel in the Crazy Horse and Ben Shaw in the Odd Rod. Ben Shaw's first time ever to the finals. Ben's had a lot of firsts today, David. I think it was the first time to the second round, first time to the third round, and so forth. And, I, you know, these, to him and his dad, Kevin, you won't find no better people, no question about it. And I just know his dad, Kevin, is back there saying, uh, probably biting his fingernails, saying, son, I don't know what to do. We've never been here before. But I can tell you one who does know what to do, and that is Larry Noel, 2018 Seagas World Champion and looking in very, very fine form today. He sure is. Ben, ben Shaw got a definite mountain to climb right here if he's going to knock off the crazy horse. Doing a good job in the first 60 feet, but look at that horsepower just stretch away. Larry Noel Sega 2021 Seagas champion of the day, brother. Congratulations. Good to see you back in the winter, sir. Man, I can't tell you. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> that, feel, all good, buddy. that feels good right there now. <laughs> it's been a while, but uh, it's a long day, but a good day. Uh, you know, I couldn't be more proud of you and Sandy and your entire family, Larry. It is so great to see you back up here in the winter circle. You was a wonderful champion, you know, a great steward for the class. I'd look to see you do it again. Maybe 2021 would be fine with me. Whew. I hope so. <laughs> Congratulations, brother. Cross them scales. Go to the winter circle. We're going to get some pictures of your smiling face. Thank you. David, it is a pleasure to see Larry. He appreciates those wins so much. Moving into the Big Ass Finals, presented by Summit Racing Equipment, and there is Leroy 
with the wheel man Wayne Swalford sitting inside taking on the 2020 B-Gas World Champion T.J. York. I love those green headlights on that Leroy car. I told him he looks kind of like the Grinch a little bit with them green eyes and the red body, but hey, that's, uh, that's another story for another time. We're down to the finals right here. It's time to go. This is the finals, baby, and this is B-Gas Best on the line right here. Number one qualifier, Wayne Swalford, 2020 world champion T.J. York. David, the competition cannot be no greater than between these two cars on this given day. Again, the best of the best in B-Gas, at least for today, on the grounds of the famed Shadyside Dragway. Buddy, this is going to be monumental. It sure is. The Fulton competition you see right there on the hood scoop for Wayne Swalford. Fuel curve engineering uh, doing the carburetors for him. But uh, underneath the hood right over there for T.J. York is a tried and true um, combination that took him to the championship last year. And let's see if he can knock off uh, Wayne right here. T.J. welding Wayne to the starting line, David. And that's what it took, and he Woo! did his job. What a great job. T.J. York, step out of that race car, my man. You don't know if you know it or not. You won that round on a hole shot. You just introduced Mr. Wayne Swalford to how a world champion becomes a world champion. Buddy, we knew we had to get him on the tree. You know, we're just not quite there yet, but I knew I had to get at everything. You can't you can't give Wayne no slack. He's one class act and tough driver, and we knew we had to get on it. And it just, uh, cards fell our way. It's just, it's a great win. Bully and Danny and the CPPR boys, we've worked so hard on this car all weekend. It's just, uh, it's phenomenal, and I'm so happy to take this win. I bet you are, TJ, especially after Holt, Florida, everything that went wrong there. All of the work that you had to do to get this thing to come together. Congratulations, TJ. As I said, you won that one like a champion. Appreciate it, sir. Thank you very much. We will see you in the winner's circle after you cross the scale. Thank you, sir. All right, down to the nitty-gritty, the kings of the sport right here. A-Gas Finals brought to you by Summit Race Equipment once again. JT Moses. Got to think he's got a big, you know, he knows he's got a big mountain to climb right here if he's going to take out Gabriel Burrell in the Southern Flyer. Mitch, are there any butterflies sitting over there in the left lane in that 56? <laughs> you know, JT, David, uh, you can tell by the interview that we've done with him earlier that, you know, he really is kind of a relaxed racer. And JT, I think, has came into his own over the last year, if maybe not a little bit longer than that. Again, that car has really become a competitor. Does he have butterflies? JT has been to the finals once, if not twice before, if I'm not mistaken. He knows what it's like to be here. He has probably got control of that, you know, that, 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 that fear as well as that adrenaline. That's how you win a drag race. That is one of the biggest hurdles that Gabriel Burrell had to overcome in his younger days was controlling that adrenaline to really set back, focus, and drive that car like a part of the machine. As I always tell these guys, if you'll do the same thing every time, the car most likely will. So right here, we're going to find out who can do it the best. JT knew he had to do it. He went red, but look at that car come to the center line. They're staying in. And just as we thought, Gabriel Burrell taking the win. Gabriel Burrell, come out of that Southern Flyer, my buddy. Climb on out on the running board, coming out like old Clyde. What a win, buddy. You had some serious races today, and you pulled it off in true championship fashion. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> it's one of them. We started today, and I didn't think there was much hope. You know, we were running middle of the pack in reality, uh, and it just kept on making rounds and getting faster. We'd tinker here and tinker there and picked it up. We ended up picking it up enough to put it in the winner's circle, so... I think he went ahead and gave me that, and the best I could tell I saw as I was going through the stripe, my wind light was already on. He did go red. Obviously, he knew that he couldn't give you nothing because I'm sure he knew you wasn't going to give him nothing. But what you may not have thought or realized, Gabriel, is you just won the most rounds of competitions in Sega's, Sega's category in the history of Sega. Glad to do it. Maybe we can do it again eight or nine more times this year. Hey, if you can win five rounds in one day, you should be able to win four anytime. Sounds good. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up racing for the day, but stay tuned with us for a few more minutes as we go into the winner's circle and we crown our champion. All right, congratulations, Rocky Platt, taking home the win here today in our AFX category. And, buddy, I, I, I got to think, I saw this race car go down the track several times. I got to think Dad was riding right along with you in this tribute car to him. Uh, he was tonight. He definitely was. Uh, Todd Wimbley had my number all day long. He had my number last race, but I believe Dad was with me because I drove the hell out of that car as hard as it would go. And I just, I, he still got me time-wise, but I just got him out of the hole and beat. I got lucky and beat him, but it's because my daddy was with me. It, true, Todd Wimberly really been working hard on that race car. That Falcon went straight down the racetrack for him today. And like you said, the starting line advantage, you know, you beat him on a hole shot, and that's what took home the victory for you today. That's definitely what took home the victory. And I got to tell you, it's a little inside joke. Cynthia Phillips and I have a secret knock. And tonight, baby, that secret knock was happening. Well, I'm going to let you keep that secret to yourself. But, you know, also in this in this AFX category, Hub Saver brought uh, – we're going to bring in Johnny Phillips here. Hub Saver donated $100 to the winner. I don't know if you know that. Come on in here, Johnny. Let's get you that prize money right here from Johnny and Hub Saver. Thank you so much, Johnny, for helping sponsor this event in the AFX category. We enjoy doing it because my dad used to race these cars back when I was a young boy in the 60s. And this is the one cars I love seeing come up here. So I want to give you all the support I can. Just like I said. All right, a crisp $100 bill right there from Hub Saver and JFP Solutions to the winner here today in our AFX category, Mr. Rocky Platt, Shady Side Dragway. All right, Mark Hackett, we meet here again, my friend. I mean, this is making old habit here. Yeah, I told Mitch earlier today, I don't remember if this is four or maybe five in a row we've run at Shadyside, and we love Shadyside here. <laughs> No doubt you love Shady Side Dragway and you love in Southeast Gassers because you just continue to march on round after round. You're putting a stranglehold on this class. Well, I'm going to tell you something. The class is getting a lot tougher this weekend. The, the two cars that I ran, the two little Chevy 2s, I got to thinking with the guys that are helping, there's about 80 or 90 years of drag racing experience. They've probably won more drag races than I'll get to go to the rest of my life. So it's a tough field at this point. There's no doubt about that. The, the, the field's getting tough. The field's getting deeper. I mean, you know, it took five rounds to win in Superstock today, as well as all of our classes took five rounds to win. But you continue to keep pounding on this car and getting horsepower out of it. Yeah, I mean, I really didn't get to work on it much between Florida and here like I, like I like to do, but uh, the car performed well for us. We just hope it stays together, and we'll keep tinkering on a little bit at a time. Well, tinkering on it, you would do. You'd keep getting more ET and ET out of it. You are the ET record holder right now, and I don't see anybody. I mean, you know, there's some there's some cars that are close, but I think racing is is the biggest part of that. There's some guys that are making power right now. They're going to get your chassis figured out. Uh, and I think you learn this tire, and once you get used to this tire, uh, those cars will keep getting a lot better. So uh, you're going to see it get closer and closer and closer as the year goes on. Yeah, that Hoosier 7-inch tire that we've talked about before really is just its ahead of its time, especially for the Superstock class in neutralizing the big blocks versus the small blocks and letting everybody be competitive. Yeah, I know you've heard me say it. It is the great equalizer in this class. You just you can't overpower it. you got to learn to drive it, and that's what makes this class fun. I know Bridge is always helping you out here with their uh, power. Anybody else you want to thank here tonight? Uh, you know, Black Magic Clutches, I run their stuff half for the last year and this year. Uh, it, it just is flawless. I mean, I never have any issues out of it, not adjusting on it much. Uh, wealth of knowledge anytime you need help. So I want to thank Kale and Tenzi there. Well, Rhonda and Mark Hackett putting another one in the victory circle, and you're taking this one back to Shady Side. You got quite a collection now. We got a few. Yep, sure did. Mark Hackett winning it here today, 2021 Shady Side Dragway. Well Larry Noel, let me offer a congratulatory handshake to you, my friend. Hey, it's been a long time since you put this crazy horse in victory lane. Very long time. I think uh, 2018. 
was the uh, last time Crazy Horses made it to the winner's circle. Well, you, you put it in there in fine fashion today. You did a good job driving, and, and the car performed well for you. Yeah, we worked we worked hard. I mean, I worked hard on myself. I knew I was probably the weak link in this deal. And, um, you know, to get these little motors to, to turn on, you got to turn them on, and I have a little tough time with that. And uh, we did our job today, and um, I'm thankful. Turning them on means about 10,000 RPMs when you drop that clutch sometimes too, doesn't it? Yeah, sure does. This thing here, we... Yeah, it, it wants it wants RPMs. Well, and and, and what you've done in, in this category is is really come back from, you know, finding yourself again. I I feel like if if watching you today, I mean, I saw you driving better. I saw, like you said, a lot of work you done on yourself. Yeah, I, I thought after Florida that I was kind of the weak link in the deal, and 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 then again, it's just my problem with getting those RPMs up in that starting line, and um, I just told myself today um i got to do my job you know and in the southeast gassers nobody's going to give you anything so you got to really be up on that wheel you got to turn the crap out of it and hope it holds together yeah yeah we know this car will hold together we just got to get the old man to do his job you know well the old man did a great job today larry congratulations to you it's great to see you back in victory lane my friend appreciate it all right larry noel shady side do that, you know, sports right. science crap. Right. Yeah. 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 He might be six now. like telling you to drag. I know. Well, I know, but I ain't dragging. I'm going to just get out there and just catch. That's all I want to do. Just maintain that. But when you. It lasts for if Todd's mama thinks she's up there. Because I ain't no problem y'all take my ass. Yeah. All right, TJ York going to get that Summit racing hat adjusted to go along with the Jag Zone here. We got the Summit up there. You got the whole gamut covered, don't you, buddy? Sure do, sir. Sure do. Well, the the travels and tri tribulations at Florida was tough on you. I know it was. I honestly didn't know what it would be. You know, you talked about the extra horsepower you had. The car was very erratic. A guy, you went home and done your homework. This car really performed for you today. After you know, not your normal qualifying position. Yeah, we're still chasing it. Uh, we're we're not quite there yet. Um, Bully and Danny and uh, I worked on it all day long, man. I mean, it's uh, it, it's still not there, but we're getting closer. Um, just talk Napier a little bit too, and we're we're going to do some gear changes and some stuff in it. And I think we're we're creeping up on it slowly, uh, but we're we're getting closer. We're getting closer. Took a little bit too much out of it, calmed it down too much for here. That's dangerous when you say you're creeping up on it and you're taking home the big cup here today. Yeah, I mean, it just, uh, just, I drove real well in the final. I mean, Wayne, Wayne was a class act. I mean, he, he had us all today. He was number one qualifier, really. I mean, he was on his game, and I just, uh, I, I, I sawed in on the tree. I knew I had to drive to beat him, and I just, uh, I did my job, and uh, he couldn't get back around me. Well, you did your job on the tree, and, and this car did perform well enough to win. I mean, and I know the WRP motor, you know, under the hood provides you a lot of horsepower. Yeah, it's 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 really good. I mean, we were joking about it back there. We can't leave good enough alone. You know, it's just I should have left it alone, just left the way it was last year, but nobody else leaves their stuff alone, so you got you to keep picking it up. Now it's a, it's a whole different animal. I mean, she's a good old girl, but we gotta, we got to still just on her some. Well, you know in racing, if you leave it alone and, and you, you're going to be behind and you knew that it took you you know you said you wanted to be the free bird you watched him for a year you were able to win that championship in 2020 you're not going to rest on your laurels that's just the kind of racer you are i know you that well in just a couple of years yes sir i mean we're not uh we're not going to roll over and give this championship easy i want to i want to double up we got some big plans for 21 and uh we're uh we're going we're going to try to double up here well, you definitely made a statement here today. T.J. York going for the double up right here, back-to-back -back championships, and he starts it out at Shadyside Dragway today. You can go up there later. Okay. You exactly what I need. She gave me the perfect package.
All right, Gabriel Burrow coming back in 2021. Had a little struggle down at Florida with the clutch coming apart on you. But, man, today you really did good here at Shadyside Dragway. Yeah, we fought a lot of adversity, uh, Florida race. But we got it all back together and came out here today and just put our first best foot forward. And we've come out on top, so tickled to death with it. Yeah, you ran strong all day. Very consistent. The car looked good going down the racetrack. It was consistently going left when you dropped the clutch, and then, <laughs> then it went straight after that. But uh, just it reacted to what we wanted it to do, and uh, it ran out good. So. so I guess when you know that left is coming, you can kind of uh, factor that in, can't you? You can go ahead and get a hand ready to go on it. So, uh, like I said, it, afraid to change it because it was going down the racetrack. So just let it go, do what it wanted to do, and drive it from there. Well, and, and I know you got a ton of people behind you, but, man, I got to I gotta compliment you. You guys worked, thrashed hard just to make a couple of rounds down there, but you really had to do – I'm sure you had to do some work back at the shop. Yeah, Robbie and Jack come over to the house the other night, and we worked on it and got all our pieces, uh, got the new Ram clutch back in it, and G-Force uh, got my trans fixed back and got a new bell housing for it and little odds and ends and come out here and run pretty good. Anybody else you'd like to thank here in Victory Circle for helping you get here? A whole lot of people. Uh, all my friends and family that came out today to support. Uh, it was great having everybody here. We had more hands on deck than we needed, but we <laughs> weren't going to run short. Uh, and one of this win needs to be dedicated to Cynthia. I hate she couldn't get her first one, but we put some flowers on there for her. So I hate she couldn't be here, but this one's for her. So. Very close to all of our hearts as well as breast cancer awareness. So uh, Gabriel Burrell. My compliments to you on that, and you have a compliments to you on your victory here today at Shady Side Dragway. Thanks, David. Well, Mitch Stott, as we wrap up Shady Side One, the first race of the year at Shady Side, because we have two in 2021, I'm almost out of a voice because it's so exciting today out here on this racetrack. David, you know, Shady Side, if we say it over and over every year, every year, you know, it never fails to produce some of the greatest drag racing in known to man. And I think I can or we can safely say that Southeast Gasser Association Drag Racing is second to nothing. And today was just a monumental day. We had things, you know, like uh, Larry Noel returning back to the final round and winning the race. So you just never know what's going to happen here, brother. And yes, the excitement was sufficient to cause you, the announcer, to lose your voice. I'm telling you, there was cars against the wall out in the gray, and these guys were pedaling it, legging it on down through there. And I was thinking, get out of it, get out of it. And only one major, and, and, and it wasn't terrible, but, you know, with Gerard Milladontri in the uh, 48 Anglia, you know, he had a, a bump up with the wall. But it looks like it's just going to be some front-end damage, and they'll be back uh, to racing. Yeah, you know, fortunately, the you know, with the gold gasser cars, you know, the tires kind of hang out from the fender so you got them rubber cushions out there a little bit and uh, but he did do some damage to the wheels and things of that nature could have possibly done a little chassis damage uh, you know he'll have to look at that and make sure they'll have to look at that and make sure but you know the thing about it was Donovan was here that obviously being Donovan's old white trash car he was here on hand he was kind of coaching Gerard and uh, Donovan and I you know we was talking after that happened I said it's one of them things to where I'm not surprised that this happened because these little cars, especially the little Anglia, is such a, it's just, it's just so evil, you know. And Gerard, as I was talking to him about what happened, I said, Gerard, here's the good out of this. Now you know where the point of no return is for this car. I said, you can go to the edge, but don't cross it. 
And we saw Donovan Stott, even as accomplished a driver as he is, donut that car many times, keeping it off the wall. But that's another thing for another time with Donovan Stott. But, uh, yes, Donovan here, two-time world champion, and helping him uh, get that car back right. But, uh, you know, five rounds of competition is what it took today. That's a big story in my mind. Five rounds of competition in every class that we offer to make a champion. That would be the mark of – unquestionable growth David you know no racing sanction can be considered a success if it doesn't have good growth in its competitor ranks well without question five rounds of competition in every class is the next mark of a of a record for the Southeast Gasters Association and by all means states the fact that it is alive and well and is got a very very bright future and speaking of uh, of car count, we had a great spectator count here today. We had, uh, as as always, we have here at Shady Side. Well, you know, again, that's why we say we say it every year at Shady Side. It just never fails, you know. And the the, the thing about Shady Side and the people that come, man, they're so into it. You know, I was talking to a gentleman here from Maryland today, you know, and he said, I've been watching you guys for four years. He said, I had a back injury. I was paralyzed from my waist down. And, and he said, I got started watching you and you guys doing these videos. And he said, man, you got me hooked. And he said, God is good. I'm back walking. They told me I never would. He said, but I'm walking. I'm here standing to you. And he said, so I had to come to my first race. And, and he said, I just wanted to introduce myself to you. So that's the kind of outreach that this thing has, David. It's just, it's just amazing. Amazing at the people that it grabs a hold of and 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 pulls them in. It really does. And and speaking of pulling them in, the stories from today. I mean, you know, in Holt, Florida, Gabriel Burrow and the Southern Flyer exploding the clutch and and having the problems that he had, got his parts back together and and got that car back to a very consistent run today, taking the win here at Shady Side. Uh, you know, as as we say, he won. Who cares how? You know, he won. Yes, they got that car sorted out from a tremendous parts attrition in Holt, Florida. Uh, the everything is back together, back running. You know, what will it? be at the next race nobody knows but that's the lure of the southeast gassers association and david you know we can't go no further without talking about larry noel what a comeback story that is the crazy horse that he let that steed run today didn't he and, and he just did a great job and he talked about in the winter circle interview how you know he's hesitant about really turning the car up but he said i just had to let it go and let it loose and let the bit out of its mouth and, and i think that's kind of what it happened you know it's, this thing had such built up energy from not being to the finals in so long him and the car that i think today it just unleashed but you know there's one thing that that Larry overshadows and we got to bring it to light and that is of Ben Shaw. You know, he took that odd rod truck to the finals, won four rounds. That would have won pretty much any drag race in the world. But he takes that thing to the finals. I know that him and his dad, Kevin, from, you know, Shaw, uh, uh, Lord, what is Shaw it? Audio. Shaw Audio, my Lord, I'm going dead here this evening. Uh, him and his dad, Kevin, you know, what a conversation they're going to have going home. And Ben was so proud to tell me that this thing, this engine was built on a dirty shop floor, he said. <laughs> well, we've always said if you if you have uh, some knowledge and some parts, you can race in the Southeast Gasters. It don't take the biggest pocketbook, and that showed in that car today. That's exactly right. That's a very tight budget operation, and they went to the finals in sea gas. That's it, right. David and that's a very very important comment that you just brought up you don't got to be you know of, of fame and fortune wealth to come out here and have a good time and to be competitive well Mitch I think that sums up here Shady Side Shady Side Dragway in our first run we'll be back here in November but I uh, want to make sure we remind our folks our next event is going to be at Lasseter Mountain on May the 8th so folks if you're catching this make sure you're at Lasseter Mountain uh, Dragway May the 8th and you'll see the stars of the Southeast Gasters coming your way Mitch as we always do would you mind if I close us in prayer as we go out I would, David. I uh, have no problem with that. Honored for you to do so. But I did want to say, you know, as Gabriel Burrow did, I don't know about the other racers dedicating this to Cynthia Phillips. Uh, you know, we miss her. Uh, she's not gone yet, but we know that her days are numbered. And, uh, and, and we just want her to know and her family to know, and obviously that includes Quain, uh, that Cynthia was an incredibly, 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 
important part of the Southeast Gasters Association. We know without her that it wouldn't be where it is today. And to that, Cynthia, we thank you, we love you, and Godspeed. Very appropriate, Mitch. Let's, let us go out in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for all the traveling mercies you granted all our fans to get here today, the safety that you provided our racers. We don't take that stuff lightly, Lord. The people that we you brought here and crossed paths with today and the friendships made uh, were made in your name, Lord. As Mitch did mention, Lord, we, uh, we always want to um, lift up Cynthia. And the only way I can make sense of, of the ordeal that she has been going through is sometimes God goes through his garden and pick some absolutely beautiful flowers for his bouquet. And I think he is getting an absolute beautiful one in Cynthia Phillips. Lord, we pray for her home going and for her to enter the gates of heaven and see her loved ones that have gone on before and prepare that place for the ones that are to come, Lord. For it is only your mercy for you sending your son to die on the cross that we can be saved and enter into the gates of heaven. And we ask all these things in your glorious, wonderful name. Amen. Amen.